my name is Leroy Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. In this episode here, what I'm going to do is answer some more questions that was left in the comments on my other videos. And show people and explain about the PG film and why it's so important to prove that it's a hoax so we can move on when it comes during when it comes into research. Okay. First thing, this I'm gonna pull up this image here. This is a drawing that I done in 2002, as soon as I got home from work, when I first saw uh, a Bigfoot myself. What happened was, it was on a Wednesday, and we was, I was doing a job in Indiana, and I go through this whole story in my book too, I'll let you know that now if you want to go into, I go into more details in there, but I'm going to try to make this video not that real long, but somewhat. Anyway, we was heading home, me and my workers, I was filling out paperwork, and I know approximately what time it was because every day WEBN in Cincinnati always played Another Brick in a Wall by Pink Floyd. So it was around 1, I mean 401 that afternoon. We was coming from coming through Kentucky because it would have been better when the location I was at to go through Kentucky and to where I lived at at the time in Ohio and the Richmond. So it had been quicker to go through Kentucky and then back in Ohio from Indiana where we was at. So as we was driving down the expressway there, as we got into Kentucky and stuff, and before we even got to Greater Cincinnati Airport, uh, I was doing my paperwork because we just got done doing a roof job. And as I was doing out the paperwork, one of my workers says, hey, is that a blanking monkey over there by the fence? I looked over, and as soon as I looked over, it was standing up. So I said to say, pull over. I told my other worker to pull over. So we pulled over in the truck. I got out of the truck and I walked over. I got about 20 to 25 feet away from him. And you can see all the details on him. It had this bad smell, okay? But all he did was just stand there looking at me as I even got closer and as I was looking at him, okay? After a few minutes went by and stuff like that, we're just looking at each other, you know, studying each other. Basically, that's what it looked like. He turns around, steps over this four-foot chicken wire fence that was along the highway there, and walks back off into the woods. I turn back around as I watched him walk away. I turn back around and walk back towards the truck. And I said, how long was I standing there? And they said, about 10 minutes. I said, 10 minutes? That didn't seem like that long. He says, yeah. And they kept on saying, is that what I thought we saw? Was that a monkey? Well, he said the F word and then monkey again. Again, and I said, no, what? No monkey. Okay. This is a drawing that I'd done of what I saw right here. To me, it was more human. Okay. It had regular beard, facial hair, long hair, but it had fur, thick fur covering its body. And you can see the genitals and everything else. And right around here, the fur stopped right around here, but he still had little bit right here on his knuckles but his palms was like ours the fur stopped right about here right on his wrist area right here okay and same as the feet the feet didn't had no fur around it whatsoever it just the fur stopped by the ankles the thick fur and the fur that's why after I've seen what I've seen and draw and draw this image and stuff I said I heard of this description before that's when I went in to looking back in the Bible about Esau that was in the Bible because this is supposedly what Esau looked like. So when I start putting two to two together from what I seen and reactions and how it acted and the way description is told in the Bible, these are what we call Edomites. But I go that I, I show the evidence and stuff like that in this book as well at the beginning because I put this at the beginning, the story, okay. The story I put at the beginning, as you see here, there's the image. I put the story at the beginning, and I put my research about Esau and Edomites in the beginning of this book so people can understand that I'm not saying a Bigfoot's not real. That We're talking about a film. That's all we're talking about, okay? Now, when I seen this, I was going over some other um, reports and stuff like that as the years go by. And here's an image that someone claimed that they seen one. Now, I sat there and I was looking at this and I said, well, this is, you know, approximately what I was seeing when I seen a Bigfoot 
as you see right here, with both of them side by side, it was like, that's basically what I was seeing, you know? So it's like, okay, I could believe this story because I seen that same exact thing as you see here. So, you know, these stories line up and these stories matches, you know, by the description, okay? Now, when we watch the PG film, this is why it's so important. When we watch the PG film, or Patterson Give Him a Bigfoot film, which I call American Bigfoot, when we watch that film, okay, we're seeing a total different creature as portrayed in a lot of reports. However, you know, people sit there and goes, well, what about a person, you know, uh, why can't they, or, well, let me go through this real fast. Let me say this real quick. People don't understand that everything that researchers do, okay, when it comes to re Bigfoot re sightings and people report they've seen Bigfoot and stuff like that, they always compare every image, every film footage and stuff with the Patterson and Gimlin Bigfoot film. Now, if the Bigfoot that's described by an eyewitness account and told or even a picture or image of a Bigfoot, if it did not match the Patterson's Bigfoot, then it was a hoax. That's what they put it down as. They mark it down as a hoax. You don't know how many films I've seen over the years, how many images I've seen over the years, where it looked more what I saw and what other reports was talking about, about it looking more like a human than anything else. And when we look at the one in the PG film, it looks more like a gorilla is all it does. It looks like a gorilla walking. Okay. So with people looking at this and they're going to compare it to the Patterson and Gimlin film, they're throwing the real evidence away because if it don't match the PG film, then it's not a real sighting. It's a hoax. Now, has anybody ever thought if you switched around and said, I wonder if that film was hoax, but this stuff over here is real? This is why it's so important, okay, about this film here, why it's got to be proven as a hoax, okay, because there's a lot of speculations out there. There's a lot of people out there don't even come forward anymore because of all the hoaxes that have been going on. And people's already been, people that reported it and say, hey, here's an image of a Bigfoot that I've seen. And they show it and well, it don't look like the Patterson film. So since it don't look like the subject, you're trying to hoax somebody. This is why it's so important. But people don't understand this, okay? Now, like I said that I pointed out, okay, even in my book here, this book right here, okay, here is the film site, okay? This is the film site we see right here. This is where they film Patterson and Gimlin film their film, right? In this location right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to point out some stuff that brings up flags, okay, to me. I don't know about you, but this is what brings up flags to me. When I look at this location here, okay, we see it's really not that far. Okay, you got 295.15 feet wide and 200, I mean, and 433.22 feet in length, which is really not that you're talking about a football field and a football field and a half long and wide. Okay. So it's really not that big. Okay. Now, remember, over the years, okay, which I'm going to pull this film up here. Okay. I'm going to turn down the volume. Well, we don't need to turn down the volume. I'm going to point out this, uh, this part right here. Now, let's just watch this for me. I want to show you something. Let's see if this throws up any flags. This is the PG film.
Now, as you've seen, you just watch that part where the Bigfoot was walking. Now, this throws up red flags here. You see how long that Bigfoot was out in the open? Okay, people today was wondering how can Roger Patterson captured this long, length of a footage, 57 seconds long of this Bigfoot just strolling, just strolling, not running or anything else, strolling out in the open in the middle of the afternoon by itself, just strolling along and let him running up on him. See, you got to remember one thing. Roger Patterson's running after this creature. Okay, he's got a camera in his hand. He's running up on him. He's running up behind him. If you see right here, which I'm going to pull um, this right up here. Okay, look, look at this right here. Okay, here's where the Bigfoot and down tree was at. And this is where the Bigfoot start walking. It's walk straight over here. Then it makes a turn, makes another turn, then another turn, and then it turns behind these pillars of trees, these piles of trees. Now, we look at the distance. They claim Roger Patterson was 90 feet away or 100 feet away. When all rights, he was actually only 41 and 0.57 feet away. When we line this up, okay, when we line this up as the Bigfoot was walking in the distance from him. Now, we had this Bigfoot walk starting off over here, but then there's a big break in between the film where it went from here over to here real quick. And this is supposed to when Roger Patterson fell down, okay, and he hit his knees and his elbows and whatever. But then he runs over here. Now, you remember, this is a creature out in the open, okay? Now, let me tell you something. Go out and run for, uh, find a bear. Oops, excuse me. Find a bear or a cougar or anything else like that. And you run after with a camera in your hand and see what that creature does. It's going to come after you. Because this creature is just walking calmly and cozy, just walking along. And a man's running up on him with some object in her hand, which they won't know what that object is. And is this going to still just walk calmly away? That's one of the red flags that, uh, you know, that points out real fast that people don't understand that makes this film just a film. That's all it is. It's, it's just a film. It's not real. Okay. Because no one can run up on it. Just like when people report, well, did you have a camera? Yeah, I had a camera, but it had enough time to take it out to start filming. Because that thing was like gone. People tell stories, or even people who has films of it. You see, it takes two steps and it's across this big highway, and it's already up and gone. Okay? But this creature's walking out in the open, just strolling. Not taking big steps, even though they said it's big steps, but it's really not. Just casual strolling along. Okay? Now, these are the things that people don't understand when you're looking at this. Because, honestly, a lot of uh, Bigfoot researchers, and this is the truth, a lot of Bigfoot researchers don't believe in this film okay they would say they do to a point but then again if there's that point that they don't believe in it because of the way this bigfoot just strolls along in the afternoon hours okay and there's supposedly guys cutting trees all around it and here's this female bigfoot out in the open by itself a man's running up on it with an object in his hand and that bigfoot don't bolt or take off when it had plenty of locations to take off as you see here we look at this, okay, when they're in this location here, that Bigfoot can run up this way or can run across this way or can run straight across here to get out. It could go in every direction. It could have got out of sight fast. Now, remember, they said, well, you got hillsides, you got cliffsides. Well, remember the story that Bob Gimlin said. He said as soon as it turned in that pile of trees and stuff, it took off, bolted straight up that mountainside. So if it took off, bolted straight up that mountainside as soon as it got out of sight, why did it take us time to get, why did it take that much time being in sight of them for them to film? Because nobody can't film them today. This is why a lot of people speculate and a lot of people says, oh, well, there's no such thing as Bigfoot. Because if Roger Patterson could film the Bigfoot in 1967 with an old movie camera and filming this thing over a minute long, why can't people do it today with all the technology we have and all the cameras and stuff like that? And everybody's got cameras on their cell phones and everything else. Because he filmed a person in a suit. He's not filming a real creature. Okay. This is why I wrote my book. Okay. I wrote my book and everything else to show this. Because the pure fact is, like even in telling this book, you know, you don't have to believe this. You can still think that Patterson and Gimmon Bigfoot film is real. Okay. But it's not. To me, it's not. Okay. And I've seen a real Bigfoot. 
okay? And possibly, I'm probably the only researcher, okay, that analyzed this film that actually seen a Bigfoot. Because I know the other researchers that uh, analyzed the film never seen a Bigfoot. But they claim this Bigfoot is real. But I heard some interviews of them when they first started out, when they started looking over it. They was asked questions on, do you believe it, uh, Do you believe in Bigfoot? And they said, well, there's a 40% chance that they're not real, but there's that 60% chance there might be. Well, if you're considering, well, 40% it might not be real, but 60% it might be real, okay? What makes this sure, so sure that this creature in the film is real? Because you don't believe it, and there's that 40% you don't believe it's real. So you see what I'm saying? With me, I believe in Bigfoot being 100% real because I've seen one. Okay, I believe in what I've seen. And what I've seen is not what we see in the Patterson and Gibbon Bigfoot film whatsoever. In the Bigfoot film and Patterson's film, we're seeing more or less like a gorilla walking than a humanoid, than a human that I've seen. And a lot of reports also stated, hey, it was a big human. Okay, that's the key fact, human. The creature we see in the Patterson film is not human. Okay, it walks upright. That's the only thing there is, but it's actually a man in a suit. Now, a lot of people says, well, I'll tell you what, just go ahead and put the suit on, go walk in a terrain or walk in this location, or that location, and see if it matches the film. One, that would never work. And here's the reason why it will never work is because if I'm not at that film site using the same type of camera and do the same process Roger did, okay. The film is never going to be exact. It's never going to be exact unless you use a, unless you're in the same location where Roger Patterson filmed his uh, film at, and everything, trees, the landscape, and everything was exactly the same as it was when Roger Patterson filmed. You use the same camera that Roger Patterson used. You try to find the same type of film that Roger Patterson used to begin with, and then after all that process is done, you walk with that. You know, you do the walk and everything else. Then you go into the process of remaking the film, like Ron Olson did in 1968, and put in there what he put in there and stuff. That's the only way you're going to say you can make a creation of this. I mean, if I go out here today and put that suit on, I start filming myself, even though if I walk like and stuff, they'll come up with something. Well, it's not like the Patterson film, because Patterson film, they, you know, he walked this way or that way, but you're on a smooth surface, so you'd probably be easier for you to walk that way. But try to walk over this or try to walk over that. So see, it doesn't matter how many times you try and take it. You know, you can put that suit on. I had that suit on over a hundred times, and believe you me, it is hot. The suit, the suit now is already ten years old. Okay, the suit's already ten years old. It's been in a couple of short films for my nephews. Uh, a wrestler had it on. Okay, and everything else. But, you know, like I said, there's a lot of red flags that we have to look at when we look at this film. Just like a few more things I'm going to point up here. Just like uh, when I said in that, that thing. Here's a picture of me. I'm six foot two. Okay. <clears throat> now we have to take consideration of regular shoes, the feet pads. It's underneath the shoes. And then we got the helmet or the face mask and stuff we put on. Actually, I made three different face uh Faces for the Patterson film. Okay, the copy of the suit. I made three different individuals. Okay, but this is the first one that I tried to make of it. Well, actually, this is the third one I made of it, of the mask, excuse me. Now, when I had that suit on with my shoes on, the feet pad, and the helmet, I'm six foot seven, so it's going to add seven more inches to my height. Okay, we have to look at this. Okay, now, as I point out here, Here's the film site of what the film site looked like. This is Rene De, uh, image but done by Rene DeHendam. This is the overlay of the film site we see it today. Okay. All this is lining up. All this matches and everything else. Okay. Here is the film site. Okay. Because we can even follow, follow the creek right here along the side of the, the bed and stuff like that. Now. Here's some more red flags. I want to throw up in the air at you real quick. Okay. Now, like I said, there ain't no sense of me putting the suit back on and filming it unless you have the same terrain, same camera, and everything else, and filming exactly how Roger Patterson did. 
okay? Because if you don't do it that way, it's never going to make that point. You can walk on a flat surface. You can go down here by the river when it dries up some and film across the gravel bed there. You could do it any way you want, but unless you're at the actual film site and the film site was exactly like it was back in 1967 and you was using Roger Powder's camera and his film and stuff like that, that's the only way you're going to determine whether they match or not. Okay, so that's common sense. We'll tell you that. Now, what I want to point out is this. Before Roger Patterson filmed his Bigfoot, they actually had Jim McLaren walking the path of Bigfoot. Okay, like I pointed out in my other videos and also point out in this book. When we view the surroundings in a film by John Green of Jim McLaren, supposedly filmed in 1968, and then we got Roger Patterson filmed in 1967. But when we look at these images and we look at these stills and we look at the surroundings, not the subject now, the surroundings, the surroundings tell us that John Green's film was filmed way before Roger Patterson filmed his film. And we could tell this by the surroundings. As I point out here, this is from John Green's film, 1968. We have a piece of bark hanging on a tree. But when we go into the PG film, that bark is gone. Okay. John Green film, that bark right here is hanging on that tree. PG film, the bark is gone. Okay. Now, as you see right here, see this twig that comes up and extends out this way. Now, this is a dead tree. Okay. This is a dead tree. It's not going to grow no more. But we see this extending branch coming up and then extend out. Now, this is in. John Green's film and Jim McLaren's film, Walk, 1968 now. Keep that in mind. Now let's look at the PG film. Okay, this is Roger Powell's film, 1967. Here's that branch right here. Where's that extension branch at? It's completely cut off. Just like these two here are pushed over side to side. As we see here, they're extended from each other. Okay, they're extended from each other. This branch is hanging right here. That's in the John Green's film. But it's gone here, and these uh, two sticks, uh, these two sticks here, are now crossed. Now, the reason why John Green's film come into play is because everybody practice something before they do any filming. This is the proven fact. They do this in films today. They sometimes, when they got a, for a certain scene, they do practice runs. Basically, that's what Jim Clarence's film is of John Green's film, I should say, was a practice run on how they actually want the Bigfoot to walk and where they should stand when they film it. That's what that film is about. Just like when we look at here, again, I'm gonna point this out right here. If you look over here, here's that dog print seen in the film of Jim McLaren. Now that dog print's there. Now, as you notice here, which I'm actually over here now, see if I can zoom in as much as I can, which you can't. Well, I'll point it up. I'll point this back here, which I know I'm still over here. Right here, we have dog print in the same location. We have that dog print again. Now, we got two films with that same dog print in the same location. This dog print here that's seen in the PG film, that was discovered by M.K. Davis. Like I said, when someone makes a discovery, I'm not going to take that from them. Okay, M.K. Davis discovered that dog print in the PG film. Okay. Now, I don't have no blood on it or nothing because I don't see no blood or nothing on it, but he did make that discovery of that dog print. But that dog print is also here in the same spot in the same location as we see in the PG film. Now, we're going to pull that up about that dog print, which I'm going to pull this up right up here. As you see, here's that dog print. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pull this up. Which let me resize that one. Pull this up. And we're going to pull this up. Now, we're looking at the tracking dog film. This is a frame tracking dog film. As you see over here, which I'm going to pull this over here for now. Right here is one of them dog prints from the tracking dog film. And we know there's a dog there because the, we see the dog in that film. This is a close up. Now, this dog print here is the same dog print we see in the PG film. The print matches up perfect. Okay, when we overlay them, they're a perfect match. This dog print from the tracking dog film is the same track, 
as we see in a PG film. Okay, so we know there was a dog there in the tracking dog film. Okay, there was a dog there when it came to the PG film. We can see that dog print right there. We can also see a shoe print. There's a boot print right here. There's another boot print over here and everything else. Now, they had this location picked. Okay, they had this location picked, which I'm going to pull up this right here. Okay, as you notice in this frame here, the Bigfoot's gone. Okay, well, I took the Bigfoot out. Okay, I erased it him out of this film. Like I said, you can take things and you can add things to films and stuff. And what I did is I took the Bigfoot out so I could sharpen the image a lot more, make it look a lot better. But I wanted to point this out. As you see here, here's a close-up. As you see here, the Bigfoot, when it was walking through there, there was somebody already carving a Bigfoot face and a stump. As you see right here, here it is. There's that carving of a Bigfoot being carved in a stump. We see the eyes here and there's the nose and it looks like what well, they're getting ready to start forming a mouth here and we have the brow right here above the head. And here's a closer image of it. Okay. Here's a closer image of it right here. As you see the eye, eye, nose, and the mouth. And I did the outline so you can actually see it. Okay, someone was already carving a Bigfoot there before that Bigfoot started walking. Okay, these are the things, these are red flags, and this is why I try to explain to people. They want to, you know, want me to put the suit back on. They want me to do these walks and stuff like that, which, as I point out, it would be useless to make, you know, just walking along in the woodside area or anything else unless you have the exact same camera, exact same film, and everything else. But I'm pointing this out as well for people to understand when it comes about this film because the pure stuff fact is if we don't look at all these details and stuff like that and we don't push this to the side and say, well, what about this claim here then? What about this image here? We're throwing all this evidence away now because everybody says, well, since it don't match a PG film, then it's not real. That's a hoax, okay? When I seen over the years a lot of films a lot of images and some of them's blurry but some of them look like i mean there was one image they actually marked down and said well that was a hobo that was a bum that you know probably lived in the woods okay so yeah that's not real because they don't look like patty's you know patty in the patterson film okay so they didn't mark down as a hoax now remember like i said like when these images here are taken right here we have this image, this image, this image, this image. And as you see right here, as we're going to zoom in, on this one image here, we have Rini DeHinnon's pipe. Okay, his pipe. Now, these images are taken at the Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot film site on Saturday, October 21st in, the, in the night hours. It's going from Friday into Saturday morning. That's when these images was taken. But remember, Roger Patterson Bob Gimlin is already gone. Rene DeHendon, Jim McLaren, and Lyle Lovelett, Lovelett, Lovett comes up there, and they take these images. Now, how did they know where this film site was at? There's another red flag that goes off. How did they know where the film site was at when Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin didn't tell nobody where they filmed it? They said they filmed it in the Bluff Creek area, okay, along the creek bed. Okay, at that point when they did the filming, Roger Patterson did not go back to that location. Bob Gimlin never went back to that location. But everybody knew where that location was at back then. John Green knew where the location was at. Jim McLaren knew where the uh, location was at. Randy DeHinn didn't know where the location was at. But Roger Patterson never took him there. Uh, Bob Gimlin never took him there. How did they know where the film uh, location was at? How did Randy DeHinn and them know where the film uh, location was at when it just filmed that day before? Okay. These are red flags that goes up. People don't understand this. These are things that pops up in my mind. It's like, how do they know this? If Roger Patterson didn't show them, John Green didn't, I mean, uh, and Bob Gimm didn't show them, how do they know where these locations are? And everything else. This is why it's so important. And you got to understand, this is very important. When it comes to Bigfoot researchers, okay, you have to get rid of the hoaxes. If you get rid of hoaxes, then you have the real evidence that can be shown and seen. And people can start understanding. Then people can start believing. That's why a lot of people don't want to come out and say, hey, 
I've seen a Bigfoot, but it's not like the one in the film. I mean, I've had a lot of accounts and eyewitness accounts I've talked to where they says, the reason why I won't say nothing about it and the reason why I don't want to talk about it is because it didn't look like nothing in the film. It looked totally different. They'll think I'm crazy, okay? That's what everybody always says. But people's got to understand this. The Patterson film is a hoax. But a lot of these reports are real. Now, what gets me is this, okay? I never told nobody this, but I won't mention their names. And I think people knows who they are when I say this. When I first made a copy of the Patterson and Gimlin Bigfoot film, I mean their suit, when I first made a copy of that suit that they used in the film, I showed it to researchers first because I like their opinions on things first before I bring it out to the public. Okay. Now, a lot of people sit there and uh, some of the researchers did ask me, why don't you take this suit, put it on, go in the woods and film. No one's going to know the difference. And I said, no, because I would know the difference. That's called hoaxing. I am not in the research to hoax anybody. I'm in the research to prove facts. Okay. But they asked me, they said, you don't understand. Now, Patterson film is a hoax. We all know this. This is what Bigfoot researchers tell me. It's a hoax. We all know this. But if you go ahead and film yourself in the suit, no one's going to disclaim me because it looks like it's like the Patterson film. That suit is almost identical to ones in the Patterson film. So no one's going to deny you. And you can make tons and tons and tons of money off of this. Okay, you'd be the second person to ever film the complete Bigfoot walking out in the middle of the open. But I couldn't do it. Because my research is not about hoaxing people. My research is not about to make tons of money off of. My research is about the truth. My research is about pointing out facts. Okay? And everything else like that. Hoaxing somebody is not, you know, people does that stuff as a joke, especially in the Bigfoot world. They do this as a joke, just like um, Rick Dyer made a Bigfoot hoax that Hank, you know, because he plays on everybody. That's what people do. They play on other people, especially in this Bigfoot research. They play on each other so they can make money, okay? Because they know they're gonna people's going to fall for every little thing because if you believe in a PG film, you're going to believe in everything else, okay? I don't believe in a PG film because I know it's a hoax, but I believe in Bigfoot. I believe they're actually Edomites. That's by my research, which is all in this book here, okay? I'm not trying to point this book out and say, hey, you know, buy this book, buy this book. I'm giving you evidence here in my videos. I'm pointing out facts in my videos. I'm talking about in my videos things and details that a lot of people's not going to talk to about or, you know, point out. Just like I said, when it comes to the PG film, if someone's got a Bigfoot and they've seen a Bigfoot and they film it, if it doesn't look like the one in the PG film, they're going to mark it down as a hoax. That's what big researchers, uh, Bigfoot researchers are going to do. They're going to say that's a hoax because it's not real. As a Bigfoot researcher, I always get questions of, well, why can't anybody capture one a day with all the camera stuff like I pointed out earlier? Because you can't, because they're that fast. They're that fast. They're really quick. Okay, so we are not going to be able to capture them on film. But here's Paul Roger Patterson filming this movie, and he gets over, you know, close to a minute of filming. So I'm going to stop here, okay, because I think we went far enough on this video here. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to tell your friends about us. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be making more videos here soon. It's just I wanted to answer a couple questions that was asked to me in some comments and stuff. And if there's anything else that you want to know about, even from my research or the Patterson Gimme Bigfoot film or Noah's Ark or JFK, leave it in the comment below because that way I can start making some videos on that so I can answer some questions for some people and stuff like that. Again, I hope this helped out a lot on some of the questions that was asked of me about the PG film and my sighting that scene. Like I said, I put everything in this book here. My research on a real Bigfoot, which I call Edomites. Uh, also put my story in there in the image, as I pointed out, of the Bigfoot I seen. It's all in this book. It's on Kindle and, and on Amazon. Okay, and the only reason why I try to get my book sales up a little bit so I can start going out and start doing some regular filming out in the woods and then go on some uh, UFO hunts and go on some more paranormal hunts so I can just do, uh, film them so I can have the money 
because I don't get donations or nothing. All my research and stuff is basically what I have. I don't ask, I don't get donations from anybody or nothing. And that's how I try to fund my research on going further by selling these books so I can go out and do paranormal investigations and come to the truth about that kind of stuff because there is demons out there and stuff and there is paranormal out there. Okay, I keep my mind open to all research because in every field there's always something there and there's always evidence there and there's always evidence that's being overlooked. So again, don't forget to tell your friends about us. Don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, more videos are coming your way. Thank you.